folks, it's time to pour another dram. I have here a dusty bottle of uh, Macaloni's TWA cask series. Um, Isla blended malt scotch whiskey. It is a blend of Kalila and Bunahaven. And um, it's a blend from Kalila and Bunahaven distilleries in Isla. And this is one bottle of 918 in existence. And so that's all of these that will ever be made. This is a vatting. I guess it was vat vatted either in Scotland or in Canada and bottled in Canada by the uh, distillery nearby called the um, Victoria, Victoria Caledonia Distillery. Now I've had a few drams already. I started out with a uh, MacArthur's blended scotch, then I went to uh, Johnny Walker Double Black, then I had a Johnny Walker Green Label, then I had a Macaloni's Among the Heather, which is another one from this same um, take a look at the bottle from the same uh, the same people and um, I also had a prohibition from um, Cuddy Sark and now I'm about to try a Kalila 1997 uh, no that's not correct 17 year old Kalila that's this one here but first while I'm going to taste the Kalila, I'm going to let the Macaloni's Isla blend sit and open up. Ooh, that was a tight plastic cork. Or is it, com or is it a composite? I think it's a plastic coated composite. Anyway, let's pour this one here into a dirty glass that has had a few other whiskeys in it. There we go. That's going to be our Macaloni's Isla. I think it needs to open up. Maybe I'll put it just a little more in there. Okay, I'm being generous tonight. I'm being quite generous. Um, and so, okay. Here's my seventh dram in four hours. Did I mention already what I started out with? I had a MacArthur's blended scotch. I had a Johnny Walker double black. I had a Johnny Walker green. I had a Macaloni's among the heather. I had a uh, prohibition from Cuddy Sark, 50% alcohol by volume. Then I had a 17 year old Kalila which was 55.9 uh, if I'm not mistaken and now I have a 56.7 percent alcohol by volume uh, blend from Macaloni's this is a blend of Kalila and Bonahaven it's their Isla blend and uh, it's one of only 918 bottles in existence and I got this back in July Back in July, let me check my bills here for what I paid. Uh, here we are. Macaroni's Isla. Um, $99.81, plus of course the uh, $5 or so GST and the $10 or so uh, liquor tax. So it was about $115 approximately um, yeah there you go and that was back in June July and uh, what's the date on there July 15th so July 15th uh, August September October November four months ago it is now the 12th of uh, November so uh, I say four months ago I bought this Picked it up right at the distillery. Okay. 
I'm getting some peat. I'm getting some sweetness too. I'm getting something fruity. Citrus. Citrus very often comes along with the peat. The citrus is lemons, that kind of thing. This will probably require some water to get rid of the anesthetic properties of the high alcohol content. And of course, from what I've experienced with Macaloni's blends in the past, is that they take a while to open up. The bottle has to oxidize somewhat. But I'm getting citrus and some peat. Now the question is, is the peat all coming from It doesn't seem that smoky, really. It's like they used a Bunnahaven that was not peated. And the Isla, the uh, Kalila. I'm getting some peat, but along with the peat, there's just as much citrus. Lemons predominantly, maybe a little bit of grapefruit. And it's hard to tell where the, where the citrus ends and where the smoke begins. This would be maybe a tribute to the blender's art. I am not sure. Now the smoke is coming out a little bit more. I'm getting sort of like an ashen smoke, like, like you'd get out of big peat ashes. Yeah. The citrus seems to be moving aside and bringing out this ashy, ashy, burnt up, smoky thing that's coming out. It reminds me of when I was cleaning ashes out of a wood-burning stove. There is some complexity in the smoke too. There's more than one kind of smoke. There's that ashen is that it's like ashes, that ashen cleaning up the ashes of the bottom of the wood burning stove or down the chute from the fireplace, cleaning up the ashes. What else is there about the smoke? Wood wood smoke, like burning wood. Uh, there's a bit of a tar note to it as well, like road tar. Mm. Now there's another layer of citrus coming in. This is very interesting. Very, very interesting. And 
getting a little bit of road tar. No creosote to speak of, just tar. So far, so good. Let's see what I get on the taste. Ooh. Wow. High alcohol content and ashes. It's a little hot, but I'm getting those dry ashes. It's dry. You know, on the sides, there's a little bit of tar, a little bit of pitch. Not creosote. There's other hydrocarbons. Mmm. It's rather pale, actually. I don't know if I'm going to add any water just yet. First, I want to taste it again. Ashen, ashen, ashen. Ashes, like, if you think Big Pete has a lot of ashes, that's nothing compared to this. This is just a dried out and burnt and nothing left but ashes blowing in the wind. Yet, there's a little bit of a liquidy tar thing going on. Curiously enough, I'm getting more citrus. The citrus that I'm getting is like a mandarin orange kind of citrus. That's what I'm getting right now. There, there's no lemon anymore. This is changing as it goes. Mm. So a mandarin orange with that ashy burnt ashes and just a little hint of tar on the side. Quite a nice piece of work. I'm not done with it yet. Oh. You know it's strong. Part of, the, part of the nose is alcohol. That alcohol that anesthetizes you. But I'm not getting a lot of that anesthetic on the taste. Once again, those Swedish, sweet-ish, Mandarin oranges. Mm. I believe it deserves a teaspoon. See what one teaspoon does to it of water. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens when I, now that I've put that in there. Oh. I believe that I'm getting more citrus. Oh yeah. More of that citrus, mandarin oranges kind of thing. There is less of that Ashen, burnt out. There's a lot less of that ashes. But I'm getting another dimension of the peat right now. 
It's not so much ashes. Because now it's turned more to smoke. And a bit of oranges, the mandarin oranges once again. I'm getting a bit of that tar creeping in too. Very interesting. Tar and mandarin oranges. What does it taste like? Oh. Oh, that is beautiful. Instead of getting ashes, now I'm getting the peat, the tarry peat. It's like not exactly creosote. It's richer than that. It's thicker than creosote. It is a little bit drying, but not as astringent as it was before. It is um, delicious. Um, there's a little bit of an anise, a little bit of black licorice in there, which I'm getting now that I didn't get before I put water in. Black licorice, tar, Mm, is there any orange, any citrus left? The citrus is gone. It's just peat smoke. It's just like charred barrels. It's just like charcoal smoke, um, coals, black coals, tar. The citrus is all but gone now. I'm not getting any more citrus notes. I'm just getting burnt. Wait. On the nose, I'm getting citrus. I'm getting mandarin oranges again. Fabulous. Let me cleanse my palate one more time. Taste this again. Okay. On the nose, mandarin oranges. Something meaty, a little bit of a meaty bacon, a hint of bacon on the nose, just a hint, not much more than that. A mere sousson, and then the peat, then the peat smoke comes in, rich and tarry. Oh. Bit of that mandarin orange thing again, with some ashes and some tar. Oh baby, that's rich. That is very rich. If you like tar in your whiskey, if you like peated whiskey, this one is the bomb. This is a peat bomb. This is a burnt, ashen bomb of peat smoke and wet charcoal with a hint 
at least at this point, of mandarin oranges. So there is a bit of citrus in there. And at first it was like lemon, and now it's moved more towards the oranges, the mandarin oranges, the sweet little oranges that you can easily peel the, the skin off of, or the, the, the just peel the zest off of. And ah, yeah, this is much, much smoky, much wet charcoal. If I would, if I was to have another whiskey after this, I would not taste it. This is so intense. The smoke and the burning is so in, It's not not an alcohol burn, but more burnt wood, burnt peat. It's so intense that after this, I will probably not taste anything else, and I will probably taste this when I wake up in the morning. Right now, it is. Uh, 2.20 in the morning, so I'll sleep about six hours, I guess, uh, around eight or nine o'clock, I'll be waking up going, yeah, I taste smoke, I taste wood, I taste peat, wow, <clears throat> I have to do that. Well, so as I don't bore you all to death, um, I'm going to say slanchula. Food quick. 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 Food quick.